Foods. Big T here, and in this video, we're gonna explore the so-called switch tax and talk about basically the costs that are associated with convenience. So here you can see um, my Super Nintendo and my original PlayStation 1 here. Um, but first we're just gonna talk quickly about the NES and the cost of NES carts. As you can see here is Bionic Commando. It's the closest NES card I could pull out. It's probably not the best uh, uh, for you know, my example here, but basically certain NES carts cost more uh, like the ones that came with memory batteries and the cartridges that did have that cost more because that was a manufacturing cost. So uh, games like this on NES and you know even back to Atari cost more uh, than their PC counterparts as far as the floppy games of the same name uh, because this whole package here you know this has to be manufactured and also obviously the chipset inside the board uh, the circuit board inside all that is a cost that is it is not associated with a floppy disk floppy all you have to do is basically the cheap little material the little magnetic strip and it's very you know cheap to produce so bonnet commando say on uh nes costs more than buying a commando on i don't know apple II or whatever uh commodore 64 or whatever the floppy disk equivalent was and so when you get to uh, the Nintendo Super Nintendo, uh, you have games like Star Fox that had an FX chip, um, so there's more hardware involved in making this game here, and so uh, they were more expensive at retail. Now, most of the time, Nintendo would eat that cost because it was their game, so they would eat the cost sometimes uh, for games that had the FX chip, were games that were um, bigger in size and needed a bigger sized cart. Uh, that had more ROM chips on it. Um, I don't really want to get into all that, but um, certain uh, certain NES games came with simple boards, or Super Super Nintendo NES the same. Uh, Super Nintendo games uh, on their um, <clears throat> circuit board, their uh, uh, a ROM board came with different uh, you know different sizes and stuff. So you had some boards that had uh, more more ROM uh, chips on it, the bigger games, um, like the like like the, say original Street Fighter only had like one ROM chip I think, and then like Street Fighter Two and subsequent other ones had more ROM chips on it, so uh, it costs more to produce. So you had games that went from um, I think the cheapest Super Nintendo game could be forty bucks, and you had games that went up to seventy bucks, uh, not more. I can't remember exactly, but I think some games were even eighty on the Super Nintendo. Um, and so obviously games with more hardware in them cost more. Here's uh, Donkey Kong for Super Famicom, Donkey Kong Country, uh, also used the FX chip, and so games like that will cost more. And but uh, on most of these Super NES games. Uh, you could save, they had save states on the cartridge, built in on the cartridge themselves. And uh, so some games cheaped out and did the password thing, but most games, I'm pretty sure every NES or every uh, Nintendo made game, every first party game had uh, built in memory on the card, on the cartridge, so you could save on the cartridge itself. And so that wasn't a problem. But for the bigger cartridges, the games cost more. Um, I mean, this is going way back, so a lot of people just don't remember this stuff, but that certainly is the case. All right, and now let's move on to, I think, the best example of, you know, this whole switch tax debate or whatever, and that would be uh, PlayStation original you have here versus N64. This is probably the best example of the quote-unquote uh, tax that would be involved with this type of situation, carts versus uh, discs. So right here I have NFL Blitz um, for the PlayStation 1, and you can see there's the disc. And obviously this is way cheaper to produce, or was and still is, way cheaper to produce than 
this bad boy here, NFL Blitz for the N64. Let's get a better look at it here. So let's get a good look. So the same game. This is the PlayStation version here. It's the N64 version. And uh, many times, get the focus back here. Um, pretty much all the time, all the multi-plats on the N64 were more expensive than the PlayStation 1 counterparts. One, because, hey, these things were very cheap in, to produce. They're a little bit more expensive back then, but they were still pretty cheap to mass produce. Uh, while you had, again, you had the plastic casing, you had the ROM cartridge inside, and you had the chipset. And you know, that also depended on the chipset, we'll get into that later. But this game compared to this game was at least $10 more expensive on the N64 than it was on the PlayStation 1. And that was just a thing that we knew and we accepted because for one, over this game, this thing loaded pretty much, you know, instantaneously. Not, I don't wanna say instantaneously, but way faster than this loaded. So there was that convenience. And uh, not so much for this game, but for other games. Um, I This is why I always preferred N64 games over the PlayStation is that um, if you notice the 3D games especially on PS1 um, because the hardware wasn't as solid as the N64 or wasn't as powerful uh, you would get this weird kind of wobbly texture effect like the walls would shake and they had this kind of jaggy shakiness to them where on the N64 you didn't have that it was very solid um, the textures were sharper on the PS1 um, than they were in the N64 because the textures could were stretch, but um, I accepted that little, you know, that blurriness. Um, and it wasn't that crazy, but the blurriness of the N64 I accepted over that because the games just looked more stable on the N64. They didn't look as shaky. Now, obviously, the advantages to this thing is that you had way more space on this for cheaper than you had on this. Um, I believe the biggest cart for uh, uh, for the N64 was 64 megabytes and these things are 700 megabytes so obviously you can do a lot more full motion video and stuff like that but that um, did change later and we'll get into that but this is a thing that was known and understood uh, that you would end up having to pay more for the cartridge over the disc this is not a new thing and I don't know why people are acting like this is a new thing um, and some games uh, would even require, I don't know if I can pull this up by hand like this. Probably have to grab something. Hold on a second. Uh, I'll just grab this butter knife because it's close. Uh, some games required the expansion pack. Let's get a close look at the expansion pack which added four megabytes more of memory to your N64 games. So your texture quality was much better. Uh, you, your frame rates were higher. You could do more um, with these uh, installed into your system instead of just the regular uh, uh, pack that was in there. I can't remember what size it was. Maybe it was two megabytes or I don't really know. Um, and for games like Perfect Dark, uh, this that thing this thing was pretty much required because yeah you could play perfect dark without it but barely there's only a couple modes that were open that you could play without the expansion pack and uh, most of the game was not so you um, I believe expansion packs were oh my gosh I can't remember I should have looked this stuff up um, either 20 or 30 dollars I'm not sure which one I want to say 20 but it could have been 30 so that is a cost for playing this game, but also this game. This game didn't even really require it. It was just that it had a weird bug um, during testing that they just, uh, Rare could just not fix, and they had to use the expansion pack, and the expansion pack fixed it. So this game was actually shipped with an expansion pack, and Nintendo was not happy about that. They were upset with Rare over that because of the cost associated with it. Um, but, you know, the game with an expansion pack did cost more um, so that again you had to pay more uh, for uh, certain cartridges and 
speaking of certain cartridges, um, at some point, the carts got bigger on the N64. Originally, um, this wasn't mostly that big of an issue, but like I said, when you came to multi-plats between PS1 and N64, the multi-plats were at least $10 more expensive, if not more. Some of the, some of the N64 games were ridiculously priced. I'm talking like 80 bucks plus tax, you know, or after taxes, somewhere around there. Uh, some of the games cost you that much, but um, uh, eventually, um, and I don't have the PlayStation version of this, but uh, like I said earlier, a lot of the problems with the, the N64 cards is that it couldn't do um, FMV pretty much at all um, for the most part until the bigger carts came out and Nintendo were, you know, Nintendo is still the Wizards of Compression and they worked with uh, Capcom to make this game happen. And this is, uh, there is no cuts <laughs> whatsoever. This is the full version of Resident Evil 2 cutscenes and all squeezed into this um, 64 megabyte cartridge. Again, this is a 64 megabyte. I believe the early ones were 12. Let me see, do I have any handy here? Let me see if I can pull one out. Okay, here we go. A game like Glover, um, you can see that Glover here uh, was one of the early games that was on a tiny cart, probably the base cart, which is maybe, you know, 12 megabytes or something like that. And so it didn't matter for most games that came out early on the N64 that the carts, you know, the bigger carts weren't available yet um, or they were too expensive and the smaller carts were available. So most, you know, this, you know, most games, most developers could get their game on the smaller carts. But for the multi-plats, that likely wasn't the case, um, especially for games like Madden. Uh, and I think that was one of the reasons EA didn't uh, support uh, N64 right away with Madden because the carts were too small and to get a bigger cart to fit a game like Madden, Madden, as you know, um, you know, Madden or any kind of sport game that, you know, uh, you know, uh, saves all your data, all your season stats and all that stuff. Those games take up, um, if you put them on a memory card, they take up so much freaking space. And, um, uh, so I'm sure that's one of the reasons that, uh, EA didn't support, uh, N64 right away was because the carts weren't big enough. And for the bigger carts, it was too expensive. And, you know, they weren't going to eat the cost. Nintendo wasn't going to eat the cost. And the consumer definitely wouldn't want to pay 100 bucks for uh, Madden on the N64 when the PlayStation version was out there and the Saturn, Sega Saturn was still around for the most part. And that version was out there for way cheaper. So they just waited. Basically, EA waited a couple years before they started supporting the N64. And this, and this uh, I talk about the, the uh, Switch because you know the switch to me is so similar in a lot of ways uh, to what the N64 was. And it's one of the reasons I'm really attached to this console right away is because it reminds me so much of this thing, you know. And I'm sure all the colors and all that stuff is coming too, but that's a whole nother discussion. But like I said, this is something that happens regularly um, when you have a cart-based system versus a disc-based system. And this game was super expensive, but Nintendo was able to work with Capcom and squeeze all the cutscenes, everything onto this. And visually, the game looks better than the, uh, the, the, uh, the PlayStation version, but the audio obviously isn't as, better, isn't as good because they had to compress it so much. And so, um, you know, it's, I wouldn't say it's muffled, but it's definitely uh, not as good as the, you know, obviously a CD based version would be. So. Again, you, there's concessions that have to be made for convenience and the convenience of being able to have this where you can just plop it in and play it. And the loads were way better, significantly better than the, the PS1 version. That, that was a great thing. But another thing, and this pertains to the whole Switch debate and hard drive space and all that stuff um, too, is that I didn't need anything for this version. Um, uh, some games you do need it, you do need memory cards for, and obviously the N64 uh, provides that for inside of the, the, uh, the uh, controller itself, but every game on this system needed a memory card 
So that was a cost out of the box <laughs> that you needed. You know, you know, what you want to say, you know, because people talk about hidden costs. The memory card for the PlayStation was a hidden cost, and these weren't cheap. <laughs> you know, initially, um, uh, again, I, I believe the original uh, PlayStation cards or memory cards. Uh, it's, it's at least the uh, first party ones were about 50 bucks um, for what size is this one this was a uh, one of the later ones but I think the earlier ones were like uh, four megabytes or something uh, eight megs or something like that and it wasn't cheap, so you had to pay for memory, for, especially for a game like Blitz or a, uh, a sports game. But every game, not you know, there wasn't any nuance. Every game required you to buy a memory card, and that wasn't the case for the N64. Some games did, and some games didn't. Not unlike the Switch, some games will require, will require you to download, even though you have the card, and some games won't. And it's very similar to, you know, the situation with the Switch, and it's very similar to this. You had to buy a memory card for everything. So on the PS4 and Xbox One, you have to have a hard drive for everything. You can get away with it on some games for the Switch, on most games. Most games for the Switch do not require you to download anything if you buy the, the uh, physical version. But every game on the PS4 and Xbox One requires you to download. All right, so let's pull this out. And obviously this is one of the games, well, not this this version, but this is one of the games that is in, you know, it's in the controversy, quote unquote controversy about the Switch is NBA 2K18. And this is NBA 2K15, obviously for Xbox One and I believe you need 40 something gigs of space. It says up to 60 because obviously there's updates and roster changes and you know stuff like that that are added in, you know, downloaded content and whatnot. So it's up to 60 gigs, but I believe you need at least 40 gigs to download. And you have to download. That's all there is to it. There's no maybe. You have to download 40 gigs onto your hard drive and then up to 60 at some point. So you, um, if you look at the Switch version, um, they were able to get it down to, to, I believe 25 gigs or something like that. Uh, and which is crazy to me. And you end up having to download 10, 10 gigs. Now, then you'll say, okay, well, at least for the Xbox One, PS4, they come with hard drives, but you paid <laughs> for those hard drives. And in most cases, you overpaid for those hard drives because you could have got something cheaper on your own. Uh, let's say, for the most part, the hard drive in your PS1 or your or PS1, your PS4, or your Xbox One, um, Sega or Sega, Sony and X or uh, yeah, Microsoft charge you a hundred bucks for you know that hard drive. Um, and you could do better on your own uh, for hard drives, uh, basically for the size. And that's what Nintendo was allowing you to do. They're saying, hey, we could charge you, I don't know, 50 bucks more for, um, we'll provide a card, uh, because I don't think they would up the, the uh, I don't think they'd up the flash memory, because flash memory is very expensive. It's more expensive than, a uh, external you know uh, mag a magnetic based hard drive and so they probably put a card in like they do with the 3ds and 3ds i think they do four gigs minimum but that's not going to do you any good on a switch so they uh, end up doing like 64 megabytes or even if they did 128 um i don't know if they do that for 50 bucks it'd probably be a 400 dollars system at that point so you're still paying for your space. It's not like uh, just because it's built in to your PS1 and your or PS4 and your Xbox One, you're still paying for it. 
your system is going from maybe a, a $300 cost to a $400 cost. Uh, if you look at the PS4, um, when it first came out anyway, they're $300 now, but maybe it would be $200 if they allowed you to just, um, if they say, okay, we won't put a hard drive in, um, maybe we'll put a little bit of flash memory in for your, um, you know, for your system updates, stuff like that. And then you can go buy whatever hard drive you want to do. And, you know, remember the Xbox 360 when it first came out and you could buy the core system with no hard drive, which is pointless. And then you could buy their hard drive, proprietary hard drives. You had no choice but to buy theirs. And the things were way overpriced because for them, it's expensive to mass produce hard drives. And where it's a lot cheaper to go buy your own. And Nintendo was giving you the choice to buy your own uh, um, carts. Or you buy your own cards. And, you know, if you go all digital, well, then that's on you. Like, the point of the Switch is that you don't have to go all digital. You don't have to use up your hard drive space. You use some, but you won't use nearly as much as the other console. So, if you go out and buy a 128 gigabyte card, if you when you buy a Switch, you're good to go for a while, as long as you're buying the the uh, the physical copy, you know. But here's the thing: <laughs> on this console, it doesn't matter if you buy the physical copy. You still have to download everything, and your disc is basically a DRM code <laughs> to let you play what's already on your hard drive. So to me, it's just so weird to have people upset and are up in arms about it the only people that should be semi upset are core nintendo fans who bought a switch and you know they felt that if they bought um they if they bought the uh the physical copy they wouldn't have to worry about hard drive space um but you guys you know everybody wants virtual console <laughs> everybody wants for the most part a lot of guys uh, nintendo guys love uh, indie games so you're gonna need a card eventually and Nintendo was saying, hey, you can take 50 bucks and go get uh, 128 to even 256 if you can find a good deal of, of hard of a, a SD a mini SD card. And you you can do better than we can do. It'll be cheaper for you to do that than it is for us to do it. And so we're giving you the choice. And I don't see what's wrong with that. You don't have a choice here. You have to have a hard drive. You know, you know, there's no instance where you don't ha need a hard drive for these games. Every one of these games require a download because these optical drives are not fast enough to run these multi, you know, these you know, HD multi gig games. And it's only going to get worse with the um, 4K games and all that stuff coming in because 4K takes up more space. It's, they're bigger. Um, you're going to have games. Uh, games are already starting to be 100 gigabytes and over. And that little 500 gigabyte hard drive, uh, you know, it's not going to do you that great if your games are 100 gigabytes or 60 or even or 70 or 80 even gigabytes because after 12 games or so, your even your one terabyte is full. After four or five games, uh, your you know, your 500 gigabyte is full. So you're going to have to get extra memory. This is just the way of the world. And uh, but the thing is, for the most part, for the Switch, for the most part, 80 percent, 85 percent of the games do not and will not require you to have some absorbent amount of hard drive space. It's just, you know, some of those multi-plats that don't have the wizardry that Nintendo has when it comes to compression, uh, they're going to require you to buy a card. And I don't, you know, you have to do that for your Vita, uh, your 3DS, you need a card if you're going to be buying games from the eShop. Um, there's not enough space in that for that. So this is something that's been around for quite some time, ever since they started putting hard drives in these consoles. So I don't know why, you know, the, you're paying for the convenience of this thing. If you think about a convenience store and you go in there and, oh my God, the prices are ridiculous for some of that stuff. And it's not because those guys just want to gouge you on a bag of chips. It's just, because, it's just that a bag of chips for them costs more than it would at a grocery store. They buy their stuff in bulk, they have all these deals and stuff, and so their chips are gonna be cheaper at the grocery store than it is at the convenience store. But the convenience is you don't have to go in there and wait in 20, 30 person lines. You run in there, you go in, you get out, you get your bag of chips and you're done. And, you know, the Switch, you know, is your bag of chips at the convenience store, you know? You're gonna pay a little bit more for the convenience 
of getting in and getting out or being able to go anywhere you want to and play your console game. And, you know, so to me, I don't know what the uproar is about. It has it has its advantages and it has its disadvantages because of its form factor. And that's just the way it is. So some of the name calling and going after people and the drama and the tabloid YouTubers, that stuff is just ridiculous. If you have any sense of video game history whatsoever, you could see that <laughs> this is nothing new and it's gonna be around. It's gonna be a thing until, you know, so probably the end of gaming. So, uh, but you know, that's not gonna be the case. This is YouTube. People have to make money on their videos. They have to be bombastic and, you know, go after people. It's sad. Um, I got caught up in that stuff for a little while. I'm, I'm leaving it alone. I'm just gonna be, I'm gonna try to be the voice of reason when I see stuff to, to, that needs, you know, some reason and put into the argument. So anyway, let me do, know what you guys think of my, uh, my argument here. Uh, do you agree, disagree? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching and listening and I'll see you fools next time. Peace out. Oh yeah, one more thing. Play Nintendo fools. Do, 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 do